My name is Jamie, and I'm currently a fourth year medical student at Iso University in Kaohsiung, Taiwan. I personally have hepatitis B and also lupus. I found out that I had hepatitis B when I was a freshman at college. They made us do a health checkup. Both my maternal grandmother and my mother, they both have hepatitis B. And um, my grandmother, she had HCC. She got liver cancer because of it. I'm familiar with hep B, but I did not know that I had it until when I was a college freshman. Well, actually, I, I shouldn't have had like um, HBV because um, in Taiwan, all the newborns have this vaccine and if your mother has H, um, HBV, you basically get a shot of um, immunoglobulins. We don't really have a lot of these cases anymore. I'm more of a breakthrough infection. Most of my peers don't have H um, Hep B now. So my mom basically did everything she could when um, when I was born. That was back in the uh, late, late 90s. So we didn't have a lot of you know antiviral options back then. So she was basically um, told to give me a vaccine and immunoglobulins and all of that failed basically. <laughs> yeah. Currently, I, I haven't actually experienced anything liver related to my Hep B infection, so I can't say much about the liver part, but um, since I do have lupus and I'm on immunosuppressive therapies like steroids and rituximab for lupus, Hep B is definitely a factor to consider. In Taiwan, there are so many people with HPV infections, um, whether they know it or not. so. They know what you'd look out for, but at the same time, the policies aren't very um, forgiving, I would say, for people who do live with um, Hep B, because it's so common here. Basically, you could like throw a rock and it'll hit someone <laughs> randomly, <laughs> hit someone with, with Hep B. So um, for stigma, I don't think so, but it's definitely something to consider if you're, tr um, if you're trying to find a job overseas, but not in Taiwan. Well, I would, um, I would just preface by saying it's not really lab infectious, like, and for the most part, you, you can die with someone with, with H, um, HBV and not get infected. Um, like, basically, if you're taking all the necessary precautions, including getting vaccinated yourself, it's really not that big of a risk. I would say it's very, very important to um, regularly get your um, labs followed, get your echoes done, because um, in many cases you could see like very young people developing liver cancer from it and they don't even know that they had the infection in the first place. The second thing is um, I would encourage young people to maybe speak out about it and because education and awareness is one of the best weapons that we have to combat stigma. So it's definitely important for young people to come out and share their experiences. Um, my grandmother is being followed up regularly. I can't say the same for my mom. She does go to her appointments, but I'm not sure if she's, you know, she really thinks of it as something serious that needs to be taken seriously. But um, I do want them to know the severity of such an infection and be mindful of what they do and how they choose to um, approach their own, you know, infections. If everyone could be treated and everyone are fit to be treated, that would be, that would be awesome. Yeah. I, I do realize that this is very expensive. Um, it's definitely an added layer of protection. You, like, you don't have to worry as much. Well, um, funding, but that's definitely one of the uh, biggest issues, if not the biggest issue that we faced um, for, you know, treatment access. But um, f for for my patients, if they do have um, hepatitis B, I would be very candid to them about their risk of developing cancer in the future, or maybe cirrhosis, and um, educate them so that they can reach their own conclusions their own decisions about whether to start treatment. Um, for starters, if they have multiple conditions, like for example diabetes or hypertension, we could try and fit all of these appointments into one day, even if um, the visits are done by different providers, so they won't have to make the trip from their homes to, to the hospital as often. 
many hospitals in Taiwan are implementing this kind of system to help facilitate a smoother, you know, checkup thing going on. So, and um, another thing is awareness. I think it's very important. You do have to be educated in um, in order to make your own medical decisions. And also screening. Um, we do have a lot of programs that are, you know, doctors are going to rural areas with their ultrasound machines and um, people are getting lab work done like at some sort of church or whatever. Um, so they're helping t um, people discover their own infections earlier and getting treated earlier. Well, I'm not a fan of taking medicines like for for the rest of my life. So hopefully there 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 will be a cure in um, in the upcoming years. I know that there are a lot of drugs in the pipeline right now, so I'm really looking forward to trying out some of them. It's very important to get monitored regularly. So um, in case you do develop cirrhosis or you do develop a tumor in your liver. It can be treated, it can be identified early and treated as needed. I think it would be less expensive to treat um, a hepatitis B infection than to treat liver cancer. Don't wait until it's liver cancer to start treatment. Mm -hmm.